Honorable Minister of External Affairs of India, Dr. S. J. Shankar, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, the Foreign Ministers, former Heads of State, Heads of Government, Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister of India, Members of Parliament, National Assemblies, Military Commanders, Philanthropists, Sportspersons, allow me to indulge for a fan moment for a second and recognize Mr. Kevin Peterson, who is here with us this evening. Distinguished guest, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Namaste, good evening, Swagatam. A very warm welcome to all of you at this eighth Rai Sena Dialogue. It is indeed a pleasure to be finally to be able to return to the in-person format of the dialogue this year. That we feel collective gratitude for being able to do so and that we can no longer take it for granted is a telling sign of the times we live in. As Samir said in his remarks just a short while ago, it has already been a very long decade. Throughout this eighth session, our eminent speakers and participants would unpack the contemporary context and share their insights on what lies ahead of us. We are honored to have their distinguished and distinct voices to reflect on the provocative, uncertain, and turbulent global landscape that we are all navigating. The evolutionary journey of the Raisina Dialogue over the last eight years has mirrored the evolution of the global landscape itself. And here is one perspective, an interesting perspective, and I quote, the Raisena Dialogue has evolved from a conference focusing on India's role in global affairs to a prominent platform for dialogue on global issues. Over the last eight years, it has expanded in scope to include a wide range of issues grown in scale with participation from over 60 countries and become more inclusive by engaging young people and women in discussions. The conference reflects India's growing role in the international community and is an important forum for exchange of ideas on key global issues such as cyber security, counterterrorism, climate change, and technology, I unquote. But why did I say what I said as in quote unquotes? I said this because this description of Rice in our dialogue is not mine. The intellectual property rights of this perspective belongs to chat GPT, which in my view is much more than what Mr. Joshi said earlier on during the evening, a self-learning algorithm. This is much, much more than that. Generative artificial intelligence tools and other modern technologies, such as chat GPT, can both guide as well as mislead. Are they provocative? Yes. Are they uncertain? Double yes. Will they cause turbulence? Triple yes. But this provocation, uncertainty, turbulence of the existing or yet to emerge likes of the Chad GPT is, what is of a kind that in my view is exciting, exhilarating and stimulating. Is it black swan? Is it tempest? Is it lighthouse in the tempest? Could be either of them, could be all of them. But even outside the field of technology, we inhabit a global landscape that seems increasingly fraught with provocations, uncertainty, and turbulence of another kind. The eighth Raisinia dialogue takes place against this backdrop. Excellencies, we inhabit a world where provocative gray zone tactics determine the shape and substance of our response matrix, where the conflict 
infused supply chain disruptions, economic distortions, the resultant curve of inflation, the rising curve of inflation, I should say, and multiple economic insecurities of food, fuel, and fertilizer force us to redefine uncertainty. Where ever intensifying contestation of global commons, unabated threat of terrorism, rapid shifts in technology, <clears throat> and I just outlined only one, with split views on its access and governance, combined with continuing inability and dysfunctionality of the weakened global institutions, reduces space for dialogue and diplomacy, inflates fragilities, and breeds multi-domain turbulence. Where despite deepening challenges of environmental degradation, growing perils of climate change, and increasing frequency of damaging natural disasters, we still refuse to adopt sustainable lifestyles. However, there are reasons for optimism. <clears throat> India, we believe, is uniquely positioned to embody and even invoke this optimism and channelize this hope for a future that we are determined to reach. Besides being, as the Honorable Prime Minister of India has often articulated, the mother of democracy, India is, one, a networked nation, both internally and externally, and an anchor of stability for global economy. Two, our economic rise represents a regional and global opportunity of tremendous significance. Three, we are a force of good, a believer in harmony, and of course, an engine of growth. We are also a credible voice of reason and moderation. Our actions at home and abroad reflect a deep sense of international responsibility. As an important member of the Global South, we seek to channelize its voice, its concerns, its interest, and its priorities. But we also aim to make them partners, indeed beneficiaries, of our developmental experiences by sharing India's sustainable developmental templates. The future of globalization project is fundamentally linked to India's own modernization and progress. India's engagement with the world reverberates its civilizational principles of pluralism, inclusivity, openness, democracy, and respect for nature. Our culture teaches us to care and share. Vaccine Maitri, vaccine friendship, Maitri standing for friendship, during the COVID pandemic, and most recently, in the form of Operation Dost, Dost as in friend, to provide rescue and relief to our Turkish citizens, to the, to the rescue and relief of Turkish citizens, which affected by the devastating earthquake are some of its better known and more recent examples. This is also the spirit we wish to evoke during our presidency of the G20 which comes at a time of unprecedented global challenges, some of which I outlined earlier on. Conscious of expectations from India, we organized the first Voice of the Global South Summit in January this year under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi to deliberate with the fellow members of the Global South on challenges being faced by them in the current global context. 125 countries out of 135 invited participated, which for us was unprecedented, but at the same time, it was also fruitful in allowing us to get the better sense of the pulse of the developing world. Our endeavor since then has been to incorporate those learnings into the G20 process. This is in many ways reflected in the manner in which we have articulated India's priorities during our G20 presidency. In conclusion, Excellencies, I would say that the multifaceted and global brand, the Raisina Dialogue, 
encourages its participants to be bold in their thoughts and brave in their intent. This is what I hope would be the flavor of not just tonight's discussion, but indeed also of the next 100 plus sessions over the next couple of days. With these words, let me once again welcome all the distinguished participants, excellencies uh, to Raisina Dialogue, eighth edition of Raisina Dialogue 23, and hand over the floor and the mic to Dr. Samir Saran to begin the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you.